Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video on my channel. So in this video we will talk about recursion. We want to understand the basic concept behind it and actually code recursive functions. We will do the coding by an application of the factorial function and the sum function. First of all, let's take a look at the basic explanation. A recursive function is a function calling itself during execution, enabling it to repeat itself several times. Thereby, I found this pretty nice meme here, which says, Recursion, in order to understand recursion, you must understand recursion, which is actually pretty true. So, credits to the author, I didn't find uh, who made this pretty nice meme. So, let's get into coding it via Python. First of all, let us take a look at the factorial function. In case you don't remember it, the factorial function is defined as the factorial of 0 is always 1. The factorial of any number n is defined as this number n minus 1 and then the factorial of this statement times the actual number. So let's take an example to make this clear. If we are taking the factorial of 1 here, we are taking 1 minus 1 and taking the factorial of this, which is actually the factorial of 0, which is 1. And then we are taking the 1 times our actual value of n, which is 1. So we are having 1 times 1 here, and we are getting the 1 value. So the next step to make this really clear is the factorial of 2. So we are taking 2 minus 1 here, and then we need the factorial of 1 here times the actual value, which is 2. The factorial of 1 is defined and that, that's the actual recursion. The, the factorial of 1 is defined here again as 1 minus 1, 0, and then we're ending up here again, which is 1. And then we're getting 1 times 2. Okay, so the factorial of 2 would be 2. So another example would be the factorial of 5 is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 which is actually 120. So we are always degrading by 1 in the factorial function because of this recursion. And how can we code this? Well, it's actually not that hard. Let's define the function first, which we are calling the factorial function. And now we have to define this statement here first. right? So we are saying if our n equals to 0, return me a 1, because this is clearly defined. And how can we define this? Well, we can say if this n value is not 1, so else, so for each value which is not 1, return me, and now we have to incorporate exactly this here. So we are saying, call this function again, the factorial function, and say n minus 1 times, of course, the actual n. Right, and that's it. So we have defined the function. So let's test it if it's actually working. So the factorial of 0 is 1. Nice. The factorial of 1 is 1. Very, very nice. So let's take the factorial of 5 to speed it up and see if we get 120. Works perfectly. So I'm explaining it in this function again in detail to make this really clear. So let's start with the factorial of 0. What does this function do? So I'm providing n as 0 here. So this if statement is triggered here. So it says me, okay, return me a 1 for this factorial function. Finished. Now, if I'm taking the factorial of 1 here, this function is working as following. I'm taking n as 1 here, and this statement is not triggered in the first place. But this statement is. And I'm getting factorial of 1 minus 1, which is the factorial of 0. So this function is called again for the factorial of 0. Okay, so the factorial of 0 is actually 1, as we saw. So this one here would be a 1. And this one is multiplied by the actual value, which is 1. So 1 times 1 is 1. And in case you are annoyed, just skip the next 20 seconds, but we are doing it for the 2 again. So, if we are doing this for the 2, 
we have the argument for n is 2. So if n equals to 0 is not triggered again. So this one is triggered for factorial 2 minus 1. So the factorial of 1 is called again now and skips the statement because the n is 1 now and is triggering the statement again. And now for 1 minus 1 for factorial of 0. So it is called even again and provides me for n equals to 0 a 1. So it's actually called three times. The first one for 2, the second one for 1 and the third one for 0. Okay. So let's take another function to make this even clearer. So remember the sum function, always called sigma. Well, if not, let's refresh it. So if I'm taking a sigma of, for example, 3, I'm just adding up all values until 3, starting from 0. So for the sigma of 3, I'm getting 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is actually 6. So another one would be the sigma of 5 is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, which is actually 15. So in case you understood the factorial function, you would understand that, that this one is pretty similar to it with the difference that we have a plus here. And of course, we have another basic statement, which we will code right now. So let's call this sigma. The sigma, and we are providing an argument, which is the actual number. We are saying if n equals to 0. Well, what should we have now? If n is 0, we of course should have a 0 in this case, because otherwise it, it wouldn't make any sense. So if we add all values up until 0, from 0 we are getting 0, right? So else, and now it's the recursion again, which we have to program. So we are saying return us the sigma function of n minus 1. And then add this one plus the actual value. So as you will see, we are doing the exact same thing as here, but we're just making this with an addition, right? So let's run this and see if I did everything right. So let's take the sigma of 0 and we are getting a 0. The sigma of 1, we're getting a 1. Let's take a sigma of 3 here, we're getting the 6. And let's finally get the sigma of 5, we're getting the 15. And sigma of 10 is 55 as far as I remember. Yeah, works perfectly. So I hope this video helped you in understanding recursive functions. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.